my problem is that I feel I don't know enough, but I like to know more. Mm -hmm. So I should just use that. Hello, everyone. My name is Li Ngo, and welcome to Educative Sessions. Educative Sessions is a podcast series with people in the developer world about their coding experiences. And Educative is a company that makes it easy for authors to provide interactive and adaptive courses for software developers. My guest today is Sundaria Ramakrishnan, who is a software engineer at Microsoft. And today she wanted to talk about imposter syndrome and how it's impacted her life. Sundaria, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the very first question. You know, you wanted to talk about an issue that honestly, it's affected myself personally. And I think it's actually come up a lot in a lot of different conversations we've had recently. So let's talk about your experiences with imposter syndrome. And when was the first time you felt like you were experiencing it? So I think there was no one particular instance when I realized that I have this it was probably an instance where I realized that there is a name for it. Okay. So I think um, I watched a TED talk. I don't even remember who gave the TED talk. And then they said something uh, called imposter syndrome. And then I read um, Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. And I think she mentioned something about that as well. And then uh, it, it kind of became a term that people were talking about a lot um, around that time. So that's when I realized that there is a name for it and that it's not just me who feels that I don't know everything there is to know. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always had this feeling that I don't know enough. I, there's still more room for development, though it's um, a healthy attitude to have. Like, you know, in healthy doses, it's good to have that feeling that I don't know enough. There is still more that I can do and not have this um, notion that I know everything there is to know. Mm -hmm. But when it crosses that level of balance, that's when it becomes unhealthy. And uh, sometimes, like, I feel that I hesitate to take uh, hold of opportunities or to speak mm -hmm. up in meetings mm -hmm. uh, just because I feel like I don't know everything about this question. I know something about it. So I should probably not say anything until I know everything. But uh, that just means that you're not raising that important question or that just means that you're not providing that possibly useful insight wow. that uh, might inform what is going on. So. That but that's such an interesting dilemma to have, right? Like mm -hmm. to want to speak up and to want to announce an objection or to uh, raise an issue that is important, but at the same time, how do you know that you are speaking authoritatively on that subject? And what's right. fascinating is I think the distinction with people who don't seem to have imposter syndrome is that they'll speak up regardless of whether they have that authority in their heads or not. And right. I wonder what is better or whether there's a difference in the way that we handle this kind of uh, negotiation in our heads, right? Should we just try to speak? And then, you know, what if we are like, what if we just don't know, right? And if we just make a mistake? Um, yeah, I presume you might have the hum humility to say, Okay, well, that's fine. I just wanted to say something. Yeah. Right? yeah. So uh, the way that I have handled it is, mm -hmm. if it's in a group that I have interacted with a lot, like they know me, mm -hmm. they know that I don't speak up until I know something about it, like at least I should know some context around it, or I should have something useful to contribute um, that I'm not somebody who will just talk to listen to my own voice. So I ha they have that frame of reference about me. So I have built that trust with them. So if it's a group like that, then um, I feel that when I do speak up, it would not come across as exhibitionism, you know? It would right. come across as, okay, she has a point to make, she has a concern, she has a question. So sometimes if I don't know enough about something, but I think that there is a particular direction that we should consider, I raise it as a question. Um, so that way, I'm talking about what I do know, mm -hmm. and I'm also leaving space for people to fill in uh, mm -hmm. things that I don't. So that's how I handle when it comes to interacting with groups that I know, that people that I'm comfortable with, people who have a reference about me. If it's a completely new group, mm -hmm. um, I sometimes like say it out loud, like, hey, I might not know everything there is to know about this, but based on my perspective, based on my experience, this is how I feel about it. What do you think about it? Mm -hmm. so, um, so I feel like it's a balance that you need to have because you do know what you know, you need to show that. But you also need to know that you, you also need to um, establish that you're okay with being corrected. So mm -hmm. being okay with being a little bit vulnerable, I think that's the key. Yeah, it's such a tricky balance to be assertive when it comes to your own knowledge, but also yeah. 
uh, to be humble in uh, making mistakes and and recognizing uh, the agnosticism of being in this kind of room. Uh, can you give us an example, like maybe a personal anecdote of a time when you've had to deal with this exact thing? Yeah, so, um, well, okay. Uh, there was like this particular instance where um, I picked up a problem that we were handling um, as part of our like on-site, uh, on-call, you know, the DRI um, cycle. So I figured out that there's a particular recurrent problem and there was a solution uh, that we could implement. So I came up with a design for it. I made a POC for it. And then I presented it with data and all that. And uh, sometimes uh, there are these guttural responses that people have. Like they don't have a concrete reason to say that I don't want this, but they feel like, nah, this is not the solution, right? Mm -hmm. And when it's people above you, um, it's a mix of managing up versus also feeling like maybe I don't know what this person is actually objecting to and I'm just looking at my own small bubble as an individual contributor and just thinking that it makes sense. So what is this person saying? So um, I kept trying meeting after meeting to show data from the perspective of um, a developer like hey this is our problem these are so many incidents that we get like over the past month and with this solution we have not got these incidents this is why we should promote this to all our production environments and then at one point i realized that i'm trying to fill in all this gap but i'm just filling in the gap from the perspective of a developer so let right. me just ask you know the people above who are objecting to be like can you tell me a concrete example of when you think this will not work? If you could help me see what you see, because I can't see what you're seeing from your level, I don't have your experience. Um, that's when I realized that I was presenting it as a framework in my slides. And the word framework means that we own it, right. we have right. to support it. Mm -hmm. But if I had said that it's an extensible solution that teams can take, and own, and then they can build their own functionalities on top of it, but we don't own the support, right? right. So it was just the question of the word that I used. So I kept getting frustrated uh, that I'm presenting all this data, like it's a slam dunk, why can't we do this? Mm -hmm. um, I had to show that moment of vulnerability and be like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're seeing. Can you please tell me? Right. So right. that really helped. And, and I think that's an adept choice on your part, because so much of these kinds of things happening isn't because of something you're doing or because of something they're doing. It's sometimes just miscommunication. It's semantics. Exactly. And so I kept struggling with this feeling of, why don't I know this? Why can't I get this? Why can't I show them that it's, it makes sense? Mm -hmm. And then I realized that maybe it's not me. Maybe it's just exactly. something that I'm not supposed to know. Maybe it's just something I'm supposed to learn from them. So exactly. I think that, that was an example. And I think that's a good example of when that does turn into a productive exercise. Um, for a lot of people who've experienced imposter syndrome, sometimes they're not actually allowed to access this information or, or they're feeling excluded from that. And uh, I always found those to be pretty upsetting moments because um, those moments of exclusion are why the imposter syndrome manifests itself. It's like some people are being pushed away from being included into the conversation and then they start to blame themselves and internalize is it because of something that's wrong with me right exactly um, and that's exactly how i was reacting yeah 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 it's 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 unfortunate and I'm, i applaud you for using the moment to just be humble and say look I, i'm not sure what's happening let's talk it through and you came to your solution um mm -hmm. my last question for you sundara is mm -hmm. um to talk about how what are some general techniques for other people who are encountering these experiences or more boldly are just like feeling They've, they've developed their syndrome to such an extent that they are feeling crippled in their own ability to learn or to grow or to work. What is, mm -hmm. are your suggestions for them? So I have a three-step process for this. Great. The first thing is recognize that you have this tendency. I wouldn't call it a problem or a syndrome. I would okay. say you have a tendency. Okay. So I would say recognize it and uh, own it and be kind to yourself. That is step number one. It's not a problem. And even if it's a problem, it's a good problem because it means that you want to fill a void, right? So it's a good problem. And the second step is introspect. Know more about yourself. Like try to understand what aspects of your own self you could use to handle this issue. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Um, I'll give you an example of how I did it, but uh, let me just go through the three steps. So the third one is strategize. Now that you introspected and figured out some aspect of yourself that you could use to turn this around, mm -hmm. strategize on how you're going to build that muscle to do that. Because just realizing that, oh, I have this, this trait in me that I can use to turn this tendency around is not enough because you've not done that for so many years and you've, you have so much practice in this imposter syndrome. So you need to practice getting out of it as well. So and I, a personal example for me is um, I realized that I have a love for learning things. I love reading. I love trying out things. I'm a very visual and application oriented person. So um, what I realized was that my problem is that I feel I don't know enough, but I like to know more. So I should just use that, right? So whenever I feel like I don't, uh, I, for example, like um, design, right? My, I felt like my design skills were not good enough because I've not had much exposure. So I kind of introspected and I was like, okay, what can I do to improve my design skills? Can I read up on design? Can I do some sample projects? Can I go to a project where I have more exposure to design um, work, right? So that's what I did recently. So I started reading up a, a lot more. I started watching videos and it's basically building on the core value of one person better every day. I wanna improve my design skills. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to be awesome in design. That's what a person with imposter syndrome usually feels like. They feel like I need to catch up on this yesterday, but that's not humanly possible. So I decided to be kinder to myself. I started doing things that I could do to improve myself in that area. Mm -hmm. And I moved to a team where there were more options to work on design. So I had people who are guiding me on that. I have more opportunities to actually do application oriented exercises, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's a practical example of how I did it, but it's a practice. You need to do it every yeah. day, have like yeah. a routine. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. And um, I think especially that it's actually, it seems so simple, except when you have to apply it over and over again, yeah. it is a process to unravel these kinds of things. And I think it's a great thing that you've identified that. Um, Sundaria, we've come to the end of our session, but we like to offer everybody who's part of these to do a shameless plug, to talk about the things that you're working on or maybe other things that you're working on in your community. The floor is yours. Go ahead. I don't really have any shameless plug to do. Okay. Uh, so I just have a request for people. Mm -hmm. Be kind to yourself. Remind yourself to be kind to yourself. And that's like the best thing you can do to yourself. So that's my only shameless plug that worked for me. So please do it for yourself. I love it. I love it. And I appreciate it so much. Uh, Sundara Ramakrishnan, thank you so much for being on Educated Sessions. And thanks to all of you for listening or watching wherever you are. You can check out more of our content on YouTube, or you can go on our Podbean account, or you can go on our various podcast apps. Um, we're on all the major ones. And lastly, if you want to learn a little bit more about Educative, check us out at educative.io. So for all of us here at Educative, thank you so much and happy learning. Bye-bye now. Hope you enjoyed that. This episode is available on YouTube and also on many podcast platforms. If you'd like to be part of Educative Sessions, the form is open now to apply. You can also email me at lee at educative.io. Lastly, don't forget to like and comment this video and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning.